Hey guys, Jason here with Andrew, and we are back to react to your Duel Masters hot takes. Yeah, we received quite a few this time, and like the last time we did this, we're actually going to split it up into two videos. Now, before we get into it, though, one of the most important uh, questions that we need to address. Andrew, is our chili rating system going to be out of 5 or out of 10? <laughs> You're asking the most important questions first. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I like five. Five is good. All right, five. So last time we did it out of ten, and then we realized it was, I guess, kind of excessive, wasn't it? So all right, was last time out of do... ten? I thought last time was I out of five. I think it was out of ten. Oh, I anyway, guess we're, we're all over the place. Yeah. All right, we'll stick with five this time. Jumping into the first thing, and unlike last time, we also didn't review these beforehand. So uh, we're coming in cold. You're gonna get some raw reactions from the Gauntlet <laughs> team. <laughs> All right, so the first hot take is from Jabbo, friend of the channel, and he says, Jalwarka Time Guardian is the most useful three-drop blocker in the game. The utility to always stop at least two attacks, even when removed, is super underrated. Out of all blockers, it is probably second only to Skeeto in terms of early game defense. Hmm. I guess I'll start things off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess when you're, like, evaluating whether this is a hot take or not, is it, like, is Jabu asking if the card is underrated? Is, is that what we're... Because the card is definitely yeah. not good. <laughs> is this try, yeah. is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, so I think Jabu is arguing that Jill Walker is pretty good. That okay. is the hot take. Yeah. Okay. Well, I definitely don't think it's pretty good i do think it's underrated um just because like people kind of see this guy and i feel like they don't really play test him around that much or maybe they do and they it just doesn't make the final cut <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like his ability um you can think about it as kind of like a like he can stop like three attacks right Yes. Um, and I think that's that's quite strong. Um, but then again, if you're summoning this guy on turn two, and the opponent has a, like a two drop, or, or a three drop, like three mana, three K, some fear fang, um, <laughs> then this guy doesn't really do anything, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess that's kind of been Light's problem in at least the Duel Masters TCG, because it doesn't quite do anything on its own. Yep. Uh, like like you tap stuff, you get shields, but in a sense, you're not really interacting with the opponent. Yeah, exactly um, right. So I guess like as a late game card, I could see its like potential, but then again, if you're making it to like turn eight or turn nine, there's probably better stuff to play. So <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, so before I jump in with my analysis, Andrew, what is the chili score you're giving our friend? Well, if if he's saying if it's um, a pretty good card, then I would say probably four out of five chilies because it's uh, not so good. But <laughs> if it's underrated, I think it's more like a, maybe a two chilies. Okay. Um, yeah, I I think this is an opinion that holds up really well in a less developed environment. Kind of like in the schoolyard days, right? I can see this card mm -hmm. being really good. Or mm -hmm. if the environment that you're playing in has a lot of aggro decks and then you play this with fire and then you know you're able to buy a lot of time with it uh, but i think in general in the more contemporary dmtcg environment uh, as a three drop blocker it definitely falls behind the likes of uh palo elisa's and especially yuliana yeah also i just saw jabbo's second sentence like um in terms of early game defense i i definitely don't think this guy is up there mm. and um Although, I, I will say, uh, a cool fun fact about this card is it did see some play in the early OCG days. So, during Bomb Bazaar's heyday, um, basically when you take a look at decks from that format on the Japanese websites, a very common deck that comes up is a Fire Light Rush deck, which uh, has Fanu as well. And Whoa. I think a variation of that placed pretty high at a tournament. Back in the day, they, they played Jawaka in that deck, and they they played Jawaka in that deck. So they played Jawaka and Holio because it's an anti-bombazar tech. 
Oh, I guess I could see uh, anti bomb as well. That, that kind of makes sense. But then this guy can't so, attack. Yeah, it's a rush deck. <laughs> yeah, so it's strictly there for the anti bomb bazaar, I think. Wow. Because I, you know, as we talked about, it stops three attacks, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, when when Windex pops it, it stops two attacks. So I guess that's not bad. <laughs> what, what's but my chili score tip, yeah. is it is also four out of five. I think there are definitely going to be some Jill Warka sympathizers uh, yep. that disagree with us, but I think in general, it's. It's a pretty unpopular opinion, I think. Mm -hmm. No, it did get four thumbs up. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Outlaw Otaku says, Cranium Clamp isn't that overpowered and should be unrestricted. There are more than enough staple draw effects like Energy Stream, Marino Mancer, Mistrius, uh, Aquahulkus, Brain Serum, Lucky Ball, etc. That, that see just as much, if not more, play that offset and outnumber the clamp. Not to mention that hand guard creatures can totally nullify it. Cranium Clamp and Discard in general are a necessary part of metagame balance as it keeps draw power in check. Oh man, right. this one is uh, is pretty spicy, I think. <laughs> Especially <pretty> since uh, <laughs> some hashtag Clamp Masters is uh, what we live by. <laughs> but then like his reasoning makes so much sense and i think we were also thinking about this um uh, like the other day um that yeah like crani cranium clamp is what like you say you always refer to as like a necessary evil right <laughs> yes <laughs> and i think that fits um you know outlaws uh comment like perfectly um, but I do still think it's pretty busted. Like, like you talk about all these draw cards, right? But then, what if you just rip out the draw cards? Um, I, I guess, I guess with Cranium Clan, you get to choose, right? Um, so you could, yes. you could choose. But then you're only, like, re regathering the cards that you lost. <laughs> so you're not really plusing still. <laughs> so, so in that, yeah. in that regard, I, I still think, like, Cranium Clan, especially early on, it, it's, it is still pretty devastating. Um... Yeah, well, what, yes. do you, what do you think? Okay. Um, so, yeah, as you touched on, I think Cranium Clamp is a necessary evil, even though I think my outlook on the Dual Masters TCG is quite different to a lot of people's. But in terms of Chili Score, I think I would give Outlaw Otaku a 3 out of 5, just because I'm trying to balance my own views with the general perception. But the thing is, is if Cranium Clamp was really as good as some may project it, believe it to be, mm. then I think it would be seeing a lot more success in the IDC environment. Uh, like uh, a lot of IDC yeah. decks, they're playing maybe between zero to two Cranium Clamp, and they seem to be doing just fine, you know? Um, I think in terms of what you brought up with like uh, an opportunistic Cranium Clamp just winning the game, like I guess that's, that's pretty true. But I think there are also a, a number of other cards that um, that can do that. Kind of like, I, I know it's a very slippery slope, but like, if you open Braid Claw on turn one, then yeah. sometimes you just yeah, win, yeah, right? Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. But the thing, is, the thing with Cranium Clamp, I feel like um, it's much more consistent because with, with four mana, you still have time to, I guess, draw into it and play it. Um, yeah, that's true. And then... I guess I guess the thing is, like, before I was I was actually gonna give this a five, but I guess the your reasoning kind of made me rethink things a little bit. But I would still give this probably like a four point five out of five. <laughs> I still live and die by this uh, hashtag clap masters. <laughs> Low key, this is all just for algorithm. People in the comments are just gonna comment about how like. Oh, Jason, you're stupid. Cranium Clamp is the worst design card ever. <laughs> like, like, thank you for helping with the algorithm, I guess. <laughs> but but then again, like, I guess it depends on how you also look at Outlaw's comment, right? He's not really saying um, the card is not good. He's just saying yeah. it's not as good as people think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I and yeah, in, in saying that, like I don't find it that objectionable. Mm -hmm. um, I think the restriction of cranium clamp in terms of like, like I don't think it's op enough to be restricted. Yeah, I but, agree with that. But, but I can certainly understand why some people f 
from a user experience perspective <laughs> might want to limit it because it's not fun to play against. Yes. Um, yeah, so I would say just like three out of five. I don't think it's that wild. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a 4.5. I'll, I'll keep to it. <laughs> All right. On to the next take. Spartan Ninja Viking, very cool name by the way, says Aqua Surfer is the best trigger in the game and it's not even close. It should see infinitely more play. Note, I am excluding Soul Swap. <laughs> so Aqua Surfer is the best trig outside of Soul Swap in the TCG. Oh, okay. That that's pretty interesting because uh, when I when you first read out the I guess the first sentence, I was like, this is not a hot take at all because Aqua Surfer is one of the best triggers in the game. <laughs> but then I guess he's maybe comparing it against um, Soul Swap, like as in like Aqua Surfer is the best shield trigger in the game <laughs> i think he's saying that if you exclude soul swap aqua surfer is the best so we're comparing yeah. it to the likes of Jared yeah Pitt, i guess so. yeah yeah oh but not so so i see i see yeah but not soul swap i see yeah no, no i i still agree with that i think um when you're comparing trigs it's really hard because they do different things um like holy or has a different utility right to aqua surfer um, yes. And that's why you don't see, say, Aqua Surfer and um, I guess more control-heavy decks, or, or, or yeah, if, if you're if you're trying to um, yep. live that extra turn, it, it doesn't work as well. Um, but I think on the other hand, Aqua Surfer probably fits as many decks as Holy All does. So <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely very versatile. So in that regard, I think it's, um, yeah, this isn't really that much of a hot take. I'll probably give it a two. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with that. Because I think when you take the sentence at face value, it's like, what? Aqua Surfer is not the best trigger in the game. And mm. then you you think about what we're comparing it to in the TCG, right? Like there is the, the spells and then there's what, like Locomotiver and, you know, yeah, I this... think in terms of like, creatures and spells yep. aqua server kind of gets the best of both worlds yep yep and i was just gonna say there's actually not that many um like quote-unquote good shield triggers right that you think of as being kind of the best yes. triggers like this holy or um terrapit and maybe locomotiva um yeah um I think the TCG, I will say though, I think that the TCG deck builders have done like a pretty good job in, you know, crafting their decks. So I think Aqua Surfer is in all of the decks that it should be in. Mm -hmm. um, so in that regard, I'm not sure if I agree with the, it should see infinitely more play. But I definitely agree with the sentiment that it is the best, especially if we exclude Soul Swap. Hashtag DMP has done nothing wrong, even though Aqua Surfer in DMP is not as good as it used to be. Mm. But then that's because... But it took a while. Yeah, it, 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 it took a long time. <laughs> yeah. So I would give this two out of five chilies as well. Nice. And for the next hot take, Claude Alpha says, Diamond Cutter with Yuliana's is a very slept-on strategy slash win con and has the potential to be quite competitive if built around. I really like this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one is... um. I also agree with so I guess on the chili scale it's probably pretty mild <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I like this idea a lot um, especially when you pair it with the licks I think it's pretty yes. good this is this is what baby block of blitz actually like is or like <laughs> there's a concept that actually works <laughs> yeah I agree <laughs> I think for longtime Duel Masters fans will be familiar with the Baby Blocker Blitz deck, which uh, placed pretty high at a tournament in 2004 or five, and it used water and light, mm -hmm. well, as the name would suggest, one and two drop blockers. And then the game would, well, the deck would win by playing Diamond Cutter with all those blockers out, and kind of like in an OTK style fashion. Mm -hmm. um, that combo in, like, I guess, more contemporary TCG Duel Masters, it's very fragile. A lot of things can stop it, especially board wipes. And like just spot removal in general, honestly. And I think Yuliana's, well, it's very good at sticking on the field. So even though it's not that resilient to Searing Wave, I think Yuliana pairs really well with Diamond Cutter. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, like you, Andrew, I also agree with this. And to be honest, we kind of took like inspiration from this concept in our Ozesu deck. Uh, mm. That deck profile's already yep. out, so definitely check it out. Um, with you know, with Bellix the Explorer and with Yuliana, you know, just having yeah. blockers that do stuff, and then that can some somehow attack her face later on. Yeah. The the other thing I was, I was just gonna touch upon is like. Um, you don't have to play it in a, I guess, baby block of blitz type of deck. Because the cards like Yuliana and the Licks, they're just good by itself, right? So, yes. all you're really, um, uh, I guess, compromising is playing a copy or maybe two copies of Diamond Color, uh, which is not that yes. much um, if you're giving yourself like an alternate win condition, as, as Claude mentioned. So, Claude, I think you are more ahead of the curve. I would give this 2 out of 5. I would probably give it 1 out of 5 if I didn't agree with it so much. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't know how the public would react to this. but I would All right, I'll give it five. 1 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make it interesting, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. All right. And for the next take, the Black Shogun says... It's better to have a full collection of proxy cards rather than spending a lot of money for the original cards. This one's pretty wild. Oh, I don't yeah, know how, to, how I feel wild. about this. I was going to say this is pretty spicy. Um, because I guess I, am I for one... Although now, I guess like when, when I think about it more and more, this is really our raw reaction that you're getting here. <laughs> <laughs> um... I was going to say, nothing feels better than playing with real cards. Um, yes. But, and this is a huge asterisk, it's hard to get real cards these days. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so, I, I um, watched a recent video, I guess it's not that recent anymore, by Earth Power, where they printed off DM13 cards um, through a proxy, I guess, just, just a just a fan of the game and they just printed some cards um but but they look really good um so i guess i guess in that sense if it's enabling more people to get into the game um then i i would be you know all for it but i, I but i still believe that you know having having real cards real authentic cards um you just can't beat that <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, for, for this, I think context matters a lot, but I would say this is a pretty hot take, um, 4 out of 5. Mm. I would give this 4 out of 5. Yeah, like, I, I this would isn't, give 4 out of 5 as well. And this isn't me saying that proxy cards are bad, because I think proxy cards are really good. Like, especially if they look good and you like the feel of them, then and they let you play the game without spending stupid money, then, mm -hmm. then that's great. But... As you said, Andrew, like people just love having real stuff. Yeah, it's um, just different, right? <laughs> it's just different. Um, I don't know if it's. I, I guess it's psychological. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the market tends to agree with us because the price of real cards just keeps rising and rising. Like people still, mm -hmm. there, there's still a demand for the real cards. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess the closest thing I could compare this to is pirated goods. I mean, mm -hmm. like knockoff yep. goods. So yeah, for like yeah. mm -hmm. designer bags, shoes watches or whatever it is you know you could have a replica that has the same design as the original yeah, yeah. and for some people that's okay that's good enough yeah and for most people most... they can't even tell right <laughs> yeah but for most people or maybe not most people but i think there are going to be a lot of people that still think yeah maybe others can't tell but i know yeah exactly. i still want the real thing. yeah yeah exactly so, so I think proxies are quite healthy, especially for the DMTCG specifically, but I think most people would probably disagree with this. eBay yep. certainly does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, for the next take, Ethan Nukes says, I'm all for more flexibility in the phases of our turns. Similar to Magic, we should be able to have a second main phase where we can summon or cast creatures and spells after attacking, activate tap abilities before summoning things, or at the very least, we should be able to charge mana after we summon stuff. Did you get that yeah, picture you... of Yu-Gi-Oh? Is that a Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, yeah, I did. I put like Yu-Gi-Oh turn nice. phase. <laughs> 
Because, you know, when we play Duel Masters, a lot of the time we're like, we, we joke around that, oh, I wish there was a main phase too, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, although, more than just, and I think, I think Ethan talked about this as well. Uh, yeah, spells before creatures. I think that's the main, like, change I would do. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, oh, you mean oh, sorry. after target I mean, I mean, spells um, after attacking. Right, okay. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, I think it just opens up more possibilities, right, for, like, cool combos. Um, yeah. I guess what I'm really thinking of is, like, using, like, card effects and then playing, like, spells afterwards. That would be really cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I see. Okay. Um yeah, no, I am all for this. But I can I do see I guess one possible complaint would be that it complicates the game. Uh like just look at how complicated Yu-Gi-Oh is, right? There's 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 more than these phases. There's also like uh, a bunch of other stuff like like damage like damage step. Step. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess like how far um I guess does the rabbit hole go right when you when you open up these possibilities so they, I think I feel like there has to be a, a limit but definitely um, doing a bit more than what is currently in the game I think would be quite quite cool and also quite healthy I think it just opens up yeah more strategy. So what is your chili score? Oh, hmm. Yeah, I'll probably give it a. Let's say two, two or three, maybe two. Oh. All right, well, this is where the video gets spicy because I'm giving this a five out of five. Uh, yeah. This is a very hot take. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, maybe I just I like understand. this too much. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why Ethan feels this way because uh -huh. making the DM rule set less rigid kind of like adds depth, but I feel like the game right now is balanced around the rule set it was born with. So yeah, that's I think it's, it's yeah. I think it's hard to say that like uh, oh, you know, Bliss Totem and Charmelia would be so much better and the game would be so much deeper if, you know, we had more phases because if the game had more phases, then the rule set, I mean, the card effects would be designed much differently. Yeah, to yeah. not be so strong. Yep. Yep. I think the game is designed perfectly the way it is. Like I think it's still sufficiently deep while being mm. simple enough. And the restrictions are also part of what make the game interesting. Mm, so, okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll give this a five out of five. Oh, man. <laughs> is this your first five? I think it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm just, yeah, I'm all for more, more um, flexibility. Maybe it's because my brain can't handle it. That's why I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just all those instances where you're just like, what if I just like can do something afterwards? Because your turn yeah. kind of just yeah. ends, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And for our final take, Jacob says, just like in the Digimon card game now, tapping your opponent's creatures was overrated and overpriced in Duel Masters. Spending two to just tap a creature is just way too expensive and excludes the player from following up with enough actions to tap anything and extract value out of the play. Other sieves get so much more impactful signature effects. Digimon also had essentially a two cost holy all, almost from the starting set, and no one played it after a while. Hmm. I'm just saying, colon the oracle, more like hashtag colon the horrible. Ouch. <laughs> He didn't have to do our boy colon dirty like that, but I, mean, I think on. he's right. I think colon's a pretty good card, though. I feel <laughs> like he'll be too busted if we made him a bit cheaper. <laughs> right. Okay. All right, that's fair. Um, but yeah, no, I agree. I agree with J uh, Jacob, though, because um, tapping is pretty underwhelming. Because um, not only you need uh, to spend the mana, you also need like a creature to benefit from it. Um, unless yeah. it's Holio, because then you play it on your opponent's turn. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, like, like cards like, um, just trying to think, like Craze Valkyrie, for example, is, is pretty yes. good, because you can benefit from the, the effect immediately. Um, yes. 
but cards like uh, Moonlight Flash or or even like Meow, uh, the vacuum cleaner. Yep. <laughs> melee. Yeah, the melee. Of <laughs> uh, you need another creature, right? Otherwise, it does nothing. <laughs> yes. Uh, so those cards, I definitely think. Um, yeah, I agree with Jabo. It's uh, overpriced. This is this is Jacob. Oh, sorry, this Jacob. is a different. Yeah. It's, it's too many J's. J A J A. Yeah. Um, so, what is your chili score for this? Uh, so, just so Jacob is saying that he thinks it's overrated, and I, I agree. Apart from Holy I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe uh, I'll go for another two out of five. Yeah, yeah. I would give this a one out of five. I don't think there's anyone that really thinks tapping is a particularly good signature effect. Uh, and we were kind of talking about it at the start of the video as well, how, you know, <laughs> tapping is not so good. Yeah, um, exactly. How, how, does uh, that, to be honest, how does that fare in our Azesu deck? Well, I guess we found out firsthand why tapping is not so good. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we needed to tap something to get good mileage out of Azesu, right? <laughs> yeah. um, to be honest, reading this comment and just thinking about some of the previous past takes that past hot takes that people send in. I feel like this is more like DM therapy. People are just thinking of these <laughs> things that they want to say and, you know, hot take or not, they just like put it in. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe we need this to is more like, yeah, the series. This is more like these are the things that people should know. <laughs> yeah, people just want to get stuff. People just want to get their DM opinions off their chest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, it's all good. I'm all for that. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much to the people that sent in their hot takes. I hope we weren't too harsh in our assessments. Now, there is another follow-up video coming, so stay tuned for that. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.